The changing of the seasons is something we often don't pay much attention to other than maybe having to alter our wardrobes a bit or where we start using our heaters instead of our air conditioners. But the seasons also serve as a metaphor for the seasons of our lives, and that's why we need to think about them more deeply. In fact, this is how scripture says that God works. Ecclesiastes reads, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under the heavens. So there is a spiritual quality to the seasons too. We are already beginning to see the leaves change here in DC and we have these rare few weeks where the trees turn from greens into fiery reds and oranges and yellows and then before we know it they are on the ground and the trees are bare ushering in the cold of winter. I was driving through the Allegheny Mountains this past week in Pennsylvania, and all of the leaves there have already turned. It's beautiful. Big, giant patches of forest just blazing in beautiful color. Here is a picture of my son staring at one of those trees. However, being the realist that I am, each year when I see these beautiful leaves, I am reminded that all of the beauty of autumn happens, wait for it, because of death, decomposition, because something is ending, something is drawing to a close. And think about that for a second. This most colorful, most vivid, most beautiful time of the year is because something is dying. Fall is, if you will, the world's most beautiful funeral. And this is where the natural has a spiritual lesson to teach us. Sure, beauty is a lesson in and of itself, but there's more than just one lesson. Jesus said this in the Gospel of John. Truly, truly, I say unto you, if a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. He that loves his life shall lose it. He that hates his life will find it. Jesus points to something that we understand in the natural world to teach us a lesson about the spiritual world so that we might understand it better. If a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone, but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Things in nature die, they always have been, even way back then. Jesus highlights this, and he says, look, things die, stuff falls to the ground, but then strangely, new things, new iterations of those things start to multiply. And then he says, he that loves his life shall lose it, and he that hates his life will find it. What does that mean? Jesus here is talking about clinging. He's talking about compulsion, compulsively clinging, trying to hold on to the life in something that was never meant to last forever. He's teaching us here a lesson in letting go, in flowing with the seasons, both natural and spiritual. And so what we begin to come away with is a question. What am I holding on to that I can let go of? What am I holding on to that I can let go of. This also touches on the big problems of our world. Poverty, disease, famine, the concentration of power and wealth in fewer places instead of many. This happens in our world because we cling to temporary things 
trying to make them last as long as we can. All throughout scripture, we see a God who is telling us to let something go, to leave something behind so that the world may continue to evolve into an even better one. Truly, truly, I say unto you, if a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone, but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. He that loves his life shall lose it, and he that hates his life will find it. What would the world begin to look like slowly over time if we started living thinking like that? What would our communities, our friendships, our families start to look like if we stopped thinking and strategizing and brainstorming ways to defend our stuff so that we can have it as long as is humanly possible? And instead, we just started asking, hmm, wonder if my neighbor needs any of this stuff. It's temporary anyway. I'm not taking it with me out of this life. Maybe I can use it to show love to someone else. What are you holding on to today in your life that you can let go of if you'll just stop clinging to it? A relationship, a piece of property, a material possession of some kind a loved one that you've lost. What is it in your life that you can look at it and say, I have been able to enjoy this for a season, but now the season is changing. God, I trust you. Here's my life. Do with it as you will. I want to ask you to spend a few moments now to think about that for yourself, what that really means for you in your life, your own unique life context. We also invite you at this time to receive communion or the Eucharist with us. If you are not in a place watching this where you happen to have unleavened bread or wine in your presence, whatever you have available is su sufficient. But let's take a few moments now to get still, to get quiet, and to reflect on what this lesson from Scripture means for each of us. Amen.